The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Empowering Your Raving Fans, presented by nationally acclaimed business e-strategist Jeff Chalmers of Results Consulting. My name is Olivia Peterson. I'm the Education Director at Women's Council. If you're not familiar with Jeff, he's a well-respected NAR technology trainer and speaker, an Inman ambassador, and over the last few years was the Region 5 and 6 Director of Communications and Technology. Jeff has also been a resource and ambassador for Women's Council Networks and members across the country. A 25-year veteran, Jeff is more than just a professional speaker as he has also closed well over 15,000 residential and real estate transactions. So at this time, we want to welcome Jeff Chalmers and thank you all for joining us today. Olivia, thank you very much for the introduction and it's uh, great to be here today. So welcome all. Great to see you today. Hopefully you're a little bit warmer than I am here. Um, today we're going to be talking about empowering your raving fans, which is what everyone is after in sales. We're always trying to create that marketing program that allows us to spend less money and make more but doing less work. Um, that's the whole idea of sales, hopefully, right? So as part of this, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I end up doing and I've done over the years and I've done uh, a lot of training for agents all over the country. And one additional thing that I'll make a very quick discussion at the very end, um, one of the things that we're offering uh, to Women's Council since uh, I end up helping them nationally is anyone who's interested in having any type of consulting or uh, strategy services that need some help with their chapter or state individual office that is a Women's Council member. Um, I'm actually offering uh, a no-fee service to everybody. If you are interested in having me come out to your office or to brokerage or to the chapter, um, the only thing you'll pay is my travel expenses based on wherever you are. Um, so if it's local, it's minimal. If it's uh, somewhere across the country, it's a little bit more. But there is no fee to, for me to do the consulting. It's just a travel expense. All right, and if anyone's interested, by all means, um, you can uh, get in touch with me with some information I'm showing at the end relative to the website. So let's get started, guys. All right, so as far as the empowering side, I mean, what you're trying to do when you're trying to build your business, obviously, is to empower people to be able to use your services without them having to do a, multiple, a, a ton of different uh, jumping through hoops. Um, a lot of times in the business, you find people that are frustrated where they're trying to track you down, they can't find a phone number, they look at your website, they don't have the website with all the necessary information, so it's tough for them to really get in touch with you. What I try and tell people is the best way that you can try and build your business is to create a business where you're empowering the client. So you provide them with the necessary capabilities where they can get in touch with you immediately. So whether it's on your website, where they can click through on a button and call you immediately, where they can schedule an appointment, those are all some of the things that we're going to be talking about. So part of the frustrations we have in sales is um, we deal with crazy people. I mean, let's be honest. So when dealing with people, remember you are not dealing with creatures of logic, but creatures of emotion. If you've been in this business enough, you have come across some people who have no logic in the things that they do <coughs> or don't have the loyalty that you expect. That is part of our business in sales, and it's a frustrating thing, but a lot of, a lot of the frustrations can be removed by empowering that client. The other thing we always have to deal with is people with who have uh, crazy expectations. So here's one thing that I love to use. It's funny. Uh, looking for someone ages 22 to 26 with 30 years of experience. Again, comes back to logic. The expectation has to be there. It has to be a reasonable expectation. And you have to empower the person in such a way so that they're not getting frustrated trying to get information from you. Um, one of the key frustrations consumers have is years past, they used to be in the real estate industry that you were the keeper of the data. So you held the real estate book. And in order for them to get information from you, they had to come to your office and sit down. Now with technology, they no longer have to do that. They have the same access to information you do. And now they have services such as the Zillows and Realtor.coms of the world where they can get the same piece of information they need from you. But it's you that they're looking for as a national professional or a local, hyper-local expert. 
So this is what we feel like every time we're addressing some of these crazy people. We feel like we're all alone, and and we are asking ourselves the question, especially to our our brokers: How can I be better? How how can I increase my business? Well, there's a number of ways of doing that, and, and I find the best way is really to do, simply empower the people. So you get this frustration where you've got this, and we obviously want to energize you to the point of understanding how you can make a better business make a more profitable business, more productive business, more efficient by doing certain things. So here's what I'm going to do to motivate you on this. All right? Understand one simple concept. You were, you were born to succeed. Now you're going to sit there and say, oh my gosh, I'm sure everybody gets hears that. Well, let me tell you this. Think of the concept of being born. The percentage of people who are born in comparison to those who aren't, if you think of the reproduction system, is very small. It's minimal. So you already have a gift because you're alive. And the idea that you're speaking to me means you've got a greater gift and you have an opportunity to have another day to basically learn and to succeed and to have a happy life. And I'm hoping that's some of what I can help you with. No longer are we dealing with a business where we are traveling to a conference room or for someone to come to the office. Now you've got some consumers that want to be able to meet you anywhere. And it could be anywhere such as um, down at Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts. So we're now in an industry that is all about no offices and low overhead. So take into consideration, consumers want the same thing. They don't want to have to travel long distance to go and meet you at your office where they feel like they're unempowered. They want to be in a position uh, in a place that they're comfortable. So two types of ways that you talk about marketing. People, when they end up marketing, they either talk with people or they talk to them. Nobody wants to be talked to. It's like being talked down to by your parents. That was never enjoyable. We certainly want to make it much more amicable where we're always trying to help them. Okay? So here's some ways of doing it. Take into consideration, people have six seconds to keep people's attention. Six seconds. It's two seconds to tell me what you want to do, two seconds to make it relevant to me, two seconds to keep me interested, and consider that visitors speed read pages and only takes in, it only takes in about 25%. So again, a picture still speaks a thousand words. So when you're having that presentation that you're giving to someone, make it visual. Less talk, more visuals, something that they can understand, because understand something that when it comes down to sales. If you can't convey to them what a child would understand, then they don't expect them to understand. And it's not that you're dealing with stupid people. They don't do what you do, and they need to understand in, in a way that makes sense to them so that they can utilize your services. So we talk about five stages of content development. And this is part of engaging people, and it's empowering them. It's providing necessary information. Necessary information. People say, well, OK, he's going to be showing me marketing today. No, it's much more than marketing. It's concepts. So part of that is the idea that there are other pieces of information that are outside of what people think is traditional content. And one key example is you talk about uh, reviews or recommendations. People don't understand that that content is extremely powerful, but you need to empower the clientele in order to get that information. So let's talk about the first one. That's create. Okay? Then you want to engage with them, friend and foster, create, and of course, rinse and repeat. Okay? So let's go through some of these things. First, you want to connect with them. right? Connect with laughter. What's the easiest way to have a discussion with someone? Well, when you've got them at ease. right? So marriage is a relationship in which one is always right and the other is a husband. Well, I think as a husband, I completely get that. We, I have no power, and, and I uh, relinquish that, and I understand that well when my dad told me that when I got married. Second part is connect with memories, okay? You, again, it's a visual thing. So when you take into consideration Foursquare, when it became uh, popular be before it ended up transitioning to a new company and service, you've got people who would um, connect with people about memories. And now Facebook is wonderful about showing memories, so you can end up taking that content and redistributing or curating. Then you can connect it forward. Okay, so if you've got someone who's got a post that you think is wonderful, don't just keep it to yourself. Let everyone else know about it. Because what happens along the lines is you'll end up posting it. They're going to find that you posted. They're going to appreciate that you did it, and they may post some of your material. And some of that material might be some marketing stuff, such as a home that's for sale. Also connect using jealousy. Good friend of mine, Novo Hata, who is the uh, uh, at NAR is wonderful at doing this. So when he traveled to Italy with his wife, he uh, posted a ton of pictures. Now, it was hysterical because he was obviously showing people where he was, but at the same time, he's got a wonderful attitude and a great, and, uh, a great personality, and it was comical what he was posting. 
then connect using pets. Now I've got a number of friends that have pets. Everyone loves pets except some of those who don't like cats. But a friend of mine, Mara Carey Neal, talks about her pets all the time. And she's got some wonderful posts talking about some great content. And that allows people to get an idea of what she's about, the idea that she likes dogs or likes pets, and ends up uh, creating a nice relationship with people who like pets. Then you engage with positivity, and this is really important. There are times that people get on Facebook and on social media when they really shouldn't. If you're having a bad day, check out a Facebook for a couple hours, because quite honestly, nobody likes negativity, and positivity ends up creating nothing but business for you, whereas negativity is going to create a perception of you that you just don't want people to know. And understand, once you get that information on social, it's there. You may think it's deleted. You may think it's hidden. It's not. So. Just take that into consideration big picture wise. Engage it forward. So here's an example. Carl Nutter, who's a wonderful person who works down at Better Homes and Gardens, uh, one of the director of learning, he used to post something having to do with um, Fist Pump Fridays. So every Friday he would post a picture and he would have a ton of people that would post the same pictures. They were comical. People ended up retweeting them on, on Twitter. They ended up posting them again on Facebook. So he had a ton of people getting involved with it. And it was just something simple. It had nothing to do with business. Now you talk about why you end up having to create content. Well, when you're creating content, it's for a rhyme and reason. You want people to follow you. You want people to engage with you. And one way that's great at doing that is to, is to embed that information or incorporate that information into your website, such as a blog. Well, creating a website in itself is creating the content. And you certainly don't want other people to create the content, because think about it. Do you want Zillow to create your content, or would you rather create your own? Again, you're trying to put yourself in the, in the position of a hyper-local expert, and you want to make sure that you can do that so, the, so that people aren't going elsewhere to get it. Because what are people go to Zillow for? It's to find a house, okay? buy, rent, sell. Well, you should be able to do the same thing with your own. Okay, so here's one one of my realtor partners and clients who uh, d does a wonderful job with a very simple website. She's got the information out there so that people can uh, can find properties that they're looking for, and she's got it done in such a way that it, it's uh, very visual, very nice, easy on the eyes, and at the same time provides all the necessary services that someone needs. Here's the important part that's important. When you end up creating a website, a lot of times it's if it's templated, so you you know, you may pay cheap money for a website, and then you end up having to create the content on it, not to mention the way the tabs are set up. I want you to take into consideration, really, the perspective of the person who's going to be viewing your website, not from yours, from the person who's going to be on the website, their perspective. And this is important, and this is important for this reason. Look up top at the tabs. A lot of times when people have websites, especially for real estate, one of the first tabs they have is about or about me, or about us, or contact. Well, first and foremost, people aren't going on there to check on information about you. That's the last question they're going to ask. They've already done their due diligence if they found out information about you. They've already Googled you, so they want to search. They want to find out information about buying, about selling, and, it's, and, they, and then they want to schedule an appointment, and then they want to find out about financing. So by creating your website, you want to bring in your vendors as well. So the financing, as one example, apps where they could download um, your information or your mobile page or your mobile website or app, and then also schedule. Think of it this way. I, it comes down to empowering. You want to provide them the ability so that they can schedule an appointment with you. So here's some of the ideas of what you can do. So here's a mobile app that was created, whereby Lisa is a partner of mine. So in Massachusetts, I also hold a lending license. Um, to originate. I consult all over the country with uh, agents, brokerages, and brands. So having the license in Massachusetts allows me to originate that uh, something I've been doing for the last about a dozen years. That's important because if I built a business whereby I've closed thousands and thousands of loans, you don't want to be in a position where you're then consulting all over the country and not in the business because then you don't know enough about the business. So. Part of what my services are is provide the ability of showing people how to leverage technology from both a desktop as well as a mobile standpoint. So here's one key example. Having this mobile app allows Lisa and any of the people that she works with to look at her listings right away, to look at the search properties right from this, which is what you want. They can save those searches on it, and then they can basically go about and schedule an appointment. Well. That's incredibly important when you're talking about empowering a person because what does a person want to do when they're on their phone? 
they want to be able to access that information from anywhere. You want to make it as easy and empowering as possible. So if a person is able to find the listings of yours without having to go on to a desktop or a laptop, they can do it right from their phone whether in the, the grocery store or at the gym. Then they can schedule an appointment without having to call and play email phone tag with you, which is insane. And then they can basically meet with you at any point that's available for them. Now, the other part of that is obviously the ability of running the calculations. Basically, upload documents to them without having to say, hey, can I fax this to you? I mean, who uses faxes anyway? And then to find the, the status of the loan. Again, it's creating that one-stop shop mentality where they can get all their information on your website or on your mobile platform. Okay, So you also want to provide it where they, again, have all the information they need without having to go elsewhere. One way I did, uh, I created the ability of getting more people to utilize my services as well as the services of my partners is I created a very simple website for my community. So Norfolk365.com. The reason for that was because I wanted to be able to engage with people in my area. Now I engage with them in other ways. I am very involved with the community. I serve on two different school committees. I serve on the zoning board. I serve on multiple other committees. That gives me opportunities to sit and meet people and get to know them. Because again, people will work with people that they like and trust. Well, people get to like who I am based on knowing, getting to know me, and they get to trust me by working with me. So this just expands my capabilities to work with people in my community because I found that the website that was for the town wasn't so great. The website that someone had created that was a Norfolk Net was more of people going on and finding out the blog about drama, which I didn't find very productive. So this allowed me to not only engage with people, but also to create situations where people started asking questions of me, like, hey, how do I get on there to put, have my company in here? So what I essentially did is, is I contacted uh, local vendors and said, hey, listen, I'd like to have your service on my website, my local Norfolk-only website. Would you be interested? Yeah. And at the same time, I said, hey, listen, I would like to basically do a video with you. And I'm going to do a one-minute video. It gets you to tell a little bit more about what it is that you do. If they find out information about me. We end up collaborating. Now they have my information in their uh, coffee house or uh, business. And now we're collaborating together where there is a value being given to them and a value in return for me just for helping them. So ways of doing it is to build it so that they have other options. So as an example, you see on Scylla's Coffee House, I put in links for their menu and their Facebook page. Okay? Now Organic Buzz has the capability of doing online ordering. So why not leverage that so that someone can go and order that so you can turn back to the company and say, hey, listen, not only would I provide the ability of people finding out about your company, but they can, I can also drive revenue by allowing them to order from our website. Well, that's a no-brainer because all it is is just a click and a link. Now you've linked it to their Facebook page. Now there are certain pieces of information you've got to take into consideration that is going to be helpful for you as well. Here's an example of what Sill is, which is a coffee house. They also have an open mic night. Well, holy smoke, that's a great opportunity for you to turn to the owner and say, hey, do you mind if I say a couple words about what I do? I promise I'll make it you know, interesting and relevant. Now you've got a couple of minutes to let people know whoever is in there about what it is that you do, and you make it short and sweet, and then you pass out you know cards or or what I do with a lot of services. I have a stand up, I have a stand up along with a card holder in that, and as part of those services with each of the vendors, I might give them a a gift certificate for a hundred dollars. So as an example, say with a dry cleaners I work with, I have a hundred dollar gift certificate. Anytime someone uses my services, um, being referred from this company to where my stand up is. I will buy them a $100 gift certificate. And the vendors love it for one simple reason. They don't have to do anything except to have that stand up right next to the register, and that's it. So it's kind of a no-brainer. As part of this, you also have services, and services and activities to include with that. So you know what's happening in the town? Well, you've got the Norfolk Community Gala as one example. Now, in Norfolk, Norfolk has a Norfolk Community League, which is a, a a women's community league that does wonderful things in the community, helps out the schools, does grants, um, does scholarships. So it's a great opportunity for you to get involved with a with a very community-based organization. Now with mine, I got involved with them as well as other organizations, and a crazy thing happened. <coughs> Excuse me. I ended up having a friend of mine who found out that they have a person of the year 
the person nominated me for the person of the year. I got selected as one of the top five people, and without having to do anything, it was like self-promotion, simple marketing, where people started messaging on Facebook and on uh, about me being one of uh, the top five finalists. Next thing you know, you, now you've 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 got information going out to people about that you're a nice person, that you're maybe a trustworthy person. That's worth its weight in gold. So just getting involved in communities and helping out always returns the favor. Now, what other things you incorporate in such something like this? A blog. If you have a website, you need to make sure that you have a blog. And here's the rhyme and reason for it. You want people to know about who you are and what you do. The only way to do that is to basically talk to people. One way to talk with people is through social media. The other one is through a blog. Letting people know exactly what you know. You need to be that hyper-local expert. The way of doing it is a couple different ways. You're having the blog so people can write articles about certain topics, but also giving the opportunity where they can subscribe to it. So now you've got information about their email address and name. And then where you ask them if you want to write, say they want to write a specific topic. Now you're engaging with them and giving them an opportunity or a value. Okay? So you've, then you Fred and friend and foster. Now, the relationships I've built with people all over the country have been where it's just, you know, how can I help you? Uh, my position is never, hey, how much deals, how many deals can I deal with? Hey, well, you know, what, how much money can we make? How many deals have you done? It really comes down to how can I help you? Because anyone who's got any intelligence is going to understand one simple thing about loyalty. They're not going to turn to you and say, I'm not going to work with you because you know, you're, doing, you're helping me with all these things. They're going to do the complete opposite. You know what? This is a no-brainer for me. Why in the world would I not want to work with you? You provide tremendous value to me by helping me out. That's all I've done to create this building ships mentality where I am constantly trying to build relationships with people and find ways that I can help them. And then you get asked in situations like this, I live in Boston, but yet I've been asked to speak all over the country. And to me, it's just getting along and, and grouping with friends, which uh, is the best thing you can ask for. Now, curate and buff. Buff is talking about buffer. If you're, if you're curating information about, um, it could be about information you want to get out, about your listings, it could be about things that are happening in your community. And again, don't just make it about your business. It really has to be about your life. And there are some people that will say, hey, I don't want people to know about my personal life. Well, you're in sales. You, you can't hide who you are unless you're doing business in probably the wrong way. And people aren't going to want to work with you because they don't trust you. So Buffer is a great app that allows you to take that information, aggregate the data that you want to have sent out to social media posts, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, at the same time, at different times. And then you can not only uh, have it sent out to different places, you can queue it at certain times during the day. It's going to be sent out. Like I have days that I'll do it first thing in the morning at 5 o'clock when I get up. I might have five posts for the day. It goes out at, certain, at different times during the day that either I want to have it go out or that Buffer will determine is the best times to go out based on whatever platform it is, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Okay? Then you have the analytics with Buffer, which tells you, you know, who's looking at it. And, and not only who's looking at it, but you know how many people are, are retweeting it, so how many people are, um, are sharing it. So those are nice little things to have. Now, in a perfect world, this is exactly what we want to do. Uh, we want to have that one button where we could press the line, especially when we get frustrated. But don't get frustrated. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do to better your business. Part of one of those things we talk about content is where you have that content. Now, people don't understand that testimonials are an incredibly powerful piece of content. And this is one piece that helps your business, that can build your business and better your business. But it depends on the content itself. Now, as an example, with Zillow, when someone gives a, uh, a review or recommendation, they end up creating this username. And the username, it's not something that I think anyone's going to trust. You might write something wonderful, but that could be your wife writing it. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be someone within your office. So you have to make sure that the content you're providing out onto social media and to, into your, uh, your clients is something that people can verify. Well, the best way to do that is LinkedIn. Okay, with LinkedIn, not only can you see what per people wrote, you can see who wrote it, and then you can click on find out more information about that person, and and that tells you that allows you to verify and make sure that it's trusted content, and not again someone who's just writing it who's a friend or a family member. Okay, now other things to take into consideration, you may have someone who's going to post something on that, especially if it's something on Zillow and it's a Zillow review given. 
do not respond to that. And if you do, respond very nicely. Because I responded back to some crazy person who wrote a review, and I have about 30 reviews, and of the 30, there were two bad ones, and they were both crazy people. Now, the problem is I went back to Zillow and said, listen, here's all the documentation to prove that these people are nuts. Zillow's position was, we appreciate that, but we're not going to take it down. Now, obviously, that infuriated me because I work hard to basically build my client base and make sure that I have that, you know, th that namesake. Now, I should have absolutely <laughs> just dismissed this and just moved on. Uh, instead, I think I was a little rough in the way I did it, and I learned from that. Not that I got any bad feedback from it, but I learned from that the second time I looked at it that, hey, listen, I should have probably taken a breather and moved on. Why is that important? Because if you remember something that happened with uh, Alex Baldwin years ago where he was, um, he was completely drunk and his, his daughter had got him on video and then posted on the social media, that was incredibly embarrassing. So don't go there. Don't be the Alex Baldwin. Okay? Think about some of the things that people are saying online. Okay? Now, in order to create that empowerment, you need to understand that people are going to be looking about you. They're going to find information online. You need to understand that you need to be the first one to catch that information. One easy way of doing that is Google Alerts. Now, this is something that people have been talking about for years, but there are still many people out there who don't leverage this. This is important. Your name is your logo. Okay? Your name is your business. Your name is everything. It's your brand. You need to understand, make sure that your brand is not tainted or that someone's not playing with it or maybe copying it when they shouldn't be. Other ways to find out is to be proactive about it. There are services out there such as Brain Yourself that allow you to basically find out information about you. Some are costly, some aren't. So Google Alerts is probably the cheapest, but here's one example. Another way of doing it is a company called Real Satisfy, which is a wonderful service that allows you to um, send out reviews that are, get sent out to your clients. The clients basically write the review. It then can be posted on social media. But I love the analytics behind it because it can be done for individual agents, but it can also be do, done for brokers as well. And from a brokerage standpoint, you can find out exactly who's doing a great job, who's not, and what the analytics, analytics are telling you about um, how well of a job you're doing as a brokerage and as a business and how where you may be able to make some changes and some differences. So. Your goal is to make friends. That's how you empower people, right? Social media is the best way to do that if it's done properly. Again, people work with people who they like and trust. So that's important. So don't get on the social. Don't try and create relationships by trying to sell. I want you to build ships. I want you to use that phrase all the time. Build ships. Now, what do I mean by ships? I mean friendships, partnerships, relationships. That's what you need to focus on. Don't focus on selling, okay? Focus on helping people, right? Never beg for attention. This is really important because I've had people go on and say, please like my page. Please go, do, don't do that. That's like you begging to be friends with somebody in real life. It, it just, it will backfire, okay? You got to do the work. You got to actually go in and if you're going to empower someone, make sure that your website is where it needs to be. Make sure that your mobile platforms are where they need to be. Make sure you're actually having those discussions. Don't think that if you make that one call a year to a client that's already closed, they're not going to know what that call means. And I'm going to go through that information with you and give you some better ideas of what things you can do. Here are some ideas of content. First of all, make love, not war. Stay positive. You don't need to be negative. If you're going to be negative and you find yourself having a bad day, get, on, get off social. It's not worth it. Shy away from confrontation, especially online. Okay? Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Three, content marketing is a campaign. It's not a race. Okay? It, it, it's a marathon. And you have to understand it so it's bits and pieces. Don't try and do everything at once. Four, become that local expert with what I call rice, which is be relevant, be interesting, and make sure that the content is exciting. Okay? Create a blog. Create a website. Make sure that that information is up to date. Do not have a blog down there that has, a, that has posts that are years old. That is nothing but embarrassing to you because it's telling you don't care anything about providing that information that's important. And again, content may be king, but relationships are queen. And again, take the guess who trumps, right? Here are some ideas of basically creating that content. Now, Happy Grasshopper does a great job of creating an email that can go out to prospective clients, partners of yours, where it, it, what it does is it creates an engagement. It creates a conversation. So you may be used to sending out information to prospects and um, leads, and what you're basically doing is providing them the data information about the market. 
people don't want to have that. They want tidbits of it. They want information every once in a while. They don't want it constantly being barraged with it. Happy Grasshopper creates that engagement. It does wonderful emails with content that is embracing and engaging so that you can have that conversation and, and just get the person to respond. BombBomb Bomb is a great way of having that conversation, especially post-meeting. So you've just met with someone and you talked to them about a listing agreement or a presentation about wanting to work with them. Now, most people are going to send that email. Hey, thanks for meeting with me. I appreciate you taking the time. What's the best way to try, to try and get someone's attention? Video, visual, right? BombBomb Bomb allows you to do that in both a desktop and mobile platform. So imagine having that discussion and you know, you're just following up on that meeting for the listing. And then you get outside, get in your car, jump on your phone, and you make a real simple, real friendly video. Hey, I just want to let you know it was wonderful spending the time with you this afternoon. I look forward to working with you. And if you have any questions, be, be, please be in touch. And then you can provide links to anything from the listing presentation to other things. DocuSign or DocuSign Transaction Room. <coughs> Excuse me. This is really important because if you use Dropbox, I see DocuSign Transaction Room as Dropbox on steroids. It not only provides you the ability of creating a transaction, transaction management system, but a content management system as well because it allows you to have folders that you can create your marketing material and everything with. So if you go and meet with someone, you've got all your signed documents in the transaction room. You've got all your marketing and other items in a um, online folder with them. That way, you've got one place you can keep everything. And, I, and of, of course, we provide services to agents and brokerages all over the country to show them how to leverage a lot of this technology. Scheduling apps. Here's some really cool apps you can embed not only in your websites but in your mobile apps. Schedule Once is one of them. The other one is Calendly. They're both great apps. Schedule Once is a little bit more expensive, but it allows you to do a lot more. Calendly is a great app that allows you to do some real simple things, and I'll show you some of the ideas. So here's some Schedule Once concepts. So this is built into our uh, consulting website at clickandsucceed.com. It allows a person to go online and create an appointment based on that. So I do this, I leverage the same thing from the mortgage side. So on my mortgage website, I allow them to basically schedule this appointment so that way we're not playing phone, um, email tennis back and forth about times and dates and you know when you're available. They can just go on, they click the book it, it automatically syncs with your calendar, puts it on your calendar, provides the ability of them putting it on theirs and then uh, creates what they can do online reminders. Nice little piece to be in. So this is what it looks like. They go in, it's syncing with your calendar, so it's looking right at your calendar, showing available times. They click it, they go next, they then basically tell you who they are, how to get in touch with them, um, where they'd like to have that meeting, and then it's done. The great thing of, that I like to utilize as far as the Schedule Once part of it is then you can push them to a page. So at the very bottom, you're going to see something that says redirecting. So you can have it set for three, five, ten seconds after they get to this page. It allows them to then cr create that calendar item where they can then put it into there. So you'll see add to Outlook calendar, add to Google calendar. So once you schedule it, then you can add it to your own. Real simple, one click. But by redirecting, it says, okay, now you're done with that part of the process. Now let me push you to a page that you're going to get information on that's going to be even more helpful. So as an example, if someone's scheduling an appointment for a pre-qualification, they schedule that to talk to me, but this pushes them to the page of my loan application so they can stop the loan application. Really helpful. You can also embed this in websites. So as an example, you've got a pop-up that allows you to do that. Now this is only with Schedule Ones. Calendly doesn't allow you to do it, but it's a nice little fixture to be part of if you're able to do that on a website where people can then click here, schedule it, get your phone information, send you a quick email, and again, embeds right to the website. Here's what Calendly looks like. Really, really simple, and this is what it looks like on a website. So I didn't show you the top portion of the tabs, just what the screen looks like from the app itself. So they click on it, they go through, it, it, you can have predetermined questions that get asked like, what's your phone number, um, what date, what time. Again, it incorporates with your Google or um, Outlook calendar, and it allows you to basically have those appointments scheduled right away. So again, very simple and inexpensive. So part of what you're doing when you're empowering is you're making an experience, okay? Um, Disney is perfect at that, as an example. When you, when you, if you're talking about brands, and I mentioned Disney, I mentioned Starbucks, I mentioned uh, something like Dell, those are, those are experiences that people usually have great experiences with. 
Now, you want to do the same thing when you're working with someone. You want to make sure that they, you're creating that raving fan mentality where that when someone talks about you, you don't have to say a word because someone else is going to brag about you. Great customer service is the best marketing, sales, and loyalty strategy. There are sales agents and sales professionals all over the country that buy leads. There's nothing wrong with buying leads if you know how to basically um, leverage the lead um, work through. If you don't, my recommendation, my recommendation is to people who even buy leads, is focus more so on your existing clientele, whether it's people that you've closed past. Those are the people who know you well. So why reinvest the money on strangers when you can reinvest the money in people who've already worked with you and know how you work and what you like? Okay. So customer service is vitally important. And let's not forget that is really the big part of basically keeping clients and building future clients. So ask yourself the question, which client do you want? Do you want the crazy one or do you want the one that's like this, that is raving about you? Okay. So testimonials is one way of doing it. Now, this is a very important topic and the reason for it is people do it wrong. People wait to the very end and then they ask the question. Don't do that. The reason you don't is because it's like a pop question. It's the most uncomfortable part of the transaction at the very end when people aren't quite sure what to say. There's a lot of emotions going on and then you turn to them and say, hey, can you write me, write me a review like right now? So you have to ease into it. So make it part of the process. Make it part of the journey. When you're working with them originally, ask the simple questions. Hey, I just want to ask, uh, are there any things that you have questions about? Is there anything I can do better? Is there something you would like me to do additionally? Ask those questions because what happens is then you're going to finish it off with this. Um, you know, I appreciate your feedback. You now, just remember, you know, I'm uh, my business is commission based, and because of that, um, I my business grows when my clients are happy. So I would love at the very end if you could write me a recommendation, a review. You're prepping them for it, and you continue to do that as the process goes on. My recommendation is to ask that question between four to five times during the process. You ask in the beginning. You ask after the offer is accepted. You ask after the P&S is done. Then as the process goes, that right there is three. So you figure the fourth or fifth one is going to be asked at closing. Ask those questions. Ask different questions, but always understand that you're prepping them for the point when you ask that question about the testimonial. And we've gone through this. So there's a method to the madness. There is making sure that there's a process associated with it, making sure that your reviews are put in the right place, there's nothing wrong with having reviews on Zillow. But I would also ask the person to copy that information and put it in LinkedIn because LinkedIn is really easy and you can initiate that with LinkedIn and all I have to do is copy it, pasting it. Now you've got it in two different platforms and the one I recommend most obviously is in Zillow, is um, LinkedIn. But again, Zillow is a nice place to have it because there are a lot of eyes looking at it. Make sure you use LinkedIn because of this. It's trusted. You know who the per people are that are writing it, okay? Creating that raving fan mentality is all about empowering. And when you can empower them, they write a book. What's worse than having someone work with you for months or a year and they write a sentence? You want to make sure that that service is such top notch that when they write about you, they rave about you, okay? Also make sure that you provide the information to them, whether it's marketing content or otherwise. Because people create something people want to share, right? What's the best thing you can share is when someone writes something nice about you, okay? Now, here's a service I love called Keeping Simple Matters. The reason it's so wonderful is because the content's created by someone, on, by someone else, them. Then you can take that information and share it on social media. The wonderful thing about it is if someone else likes it, they're going to share it. So this that you're seeing by Valerie, who's a you know, wonderful realtor friend of mine, she basically ended up keep, keeping this information and sharing it, but it gets shared directly to my website. So she's sharing it to all these people. All these people are getting the eyes on When they click on it, they go here. They get more information about mine. So make sure the content you're sharing is interesting and relevant. Then you've got to ask yourself the question, now the transaction's done, what are you doing for post-closing? Make sure that it's vitally important that you do something that is going to provide you some type of return, and especially that return is um, building smiles and, um, and filling buckets, which is what I love to tell my kids. Filling buckets is showing is providing ways of uh, providing a return with, with people without asking them for it. Okay? There's ways of doing it. Send out those letters. 
you know, make it personal. Everyone loves to get something in the mail. I like leveraging technology. So with me, whereas last year, as an example, when I was sending out um, Christmas cards and I was able to send out a thousand Christmas cards in two minutes, that's a wonderful thing to have, and that's leveraging technology like send out cards. Certainly, ask me the questions on that, guys. I'm happy to provide you all the information on it. Homekeeper is a wonderful app that was that's been heavily adopted by uh, Keller Williams in their from their corporate stand, corporate standpoint. One of the things that you that buyers never get when they purchase a property is the value of understanding what a property is what the property is all about. In other words, when do I change this? When do I fix that? Homekeeper provides that information to them based on questions that ask about what type of property it is, a single family, a condo, does it have an association, is it septic, is it private or a town. Based on those questions, they will come out with specific items that need to be done to the property. So they become your home expert. They give reminders to your buyers as to you know if things that they have to do. And then it provides a vendor resource where you can incorporate people that you know in the area. And it could be anyone from electricians to plumbers to who knows. It could be your, someone who cuts your hair. Providing a database of people, of information for people where they've just moved into an area they're not unfamiliar with and now they have that instant directory is a wonderful way of keeping people um, alive about what it is that you do and that you're still in the business. Now, take into consideration this is as true as it comes. We get paid to be nice to people. We're in sales. The nicer we are, the more money we make. And that is just the way the business is. So empowering people allows them <coughs> to, to, to talk to other people about how great of a job it was working with you, how easy it was, how seamless it was. And when are you going to do that stuff? Don't wait till tomorrow to do it. You need to start executing the stuff today. Okay? You need to make sure you do it every day folks every day if you skip days and say oh, I'll do it later and sales stuff catches up you end up having a laundry list of things to do you don't end up getting stuff done that you needed to get it done that's part of um, understanding a big picture and we help people with the consulting services on coaching with helping with stuff on that as well and don't make the excuses guys all you're making excuses to is yourself the person you see every morning is the only person stopping you from succeeding it really is this is how you build a better life. And if you notice the left-hand side, have fun, really. Be honest. Focus less on the money. Because if you focus on the quality, the quantity will come. Be accountable. Know or own your brand or others will. Provide value, okay? Provide more to your clients and require more from your partners. Absolutely require from your partners. Be effective. Be that hyper-local agent or expert. Foster. Always communicate their way. It's not about you. Remember that. Under promise, give realistic expectations and data and nurture. Build ships, not a database. Remember that. That's really important. And help people out. You know what? Do things for other people. Provide that value to other people when, and stop thinking about yourself. A lot of people in sales, we have that problem. And here's one key statistic. 85% of people in sales stop after three contacts. So a new lead comes to you. You get in touch with them three different times. It could be in a week, it could be over a couple weeks, it could be a month. People give up. 85% of people in sales give up. I want you to take into consideration what we are seen as from the consumers. We're seen as looking for that, um, that instant gratification, that one night stand. Don't. Build relationships. Understand, especially with millennials, they are looking for that long-term relationship to know that you care and that you honestly are involved in this. And get involved in stuff. I mean, I've done things where I've done uh, jumping in lakes in January for crazy things for um, Special Olympics or getting my um, my head shaved. I mean, the hair grows back, and my son wanted to do it with me for clients that um, have family members who had died of cancer. So, again, it's that bigger picture mentality. And understand that people invest in people. They really do. But they invest in people who invest in them. Okay, and this was per one perfect example. We had a closing that was a wonderful group of people, and oh my God, the amount of gifts that they brought to closing was wonderful, and not just for me, but for my closing attorney. But understand, you're not always going to succeed. You're going to fail. You need to understand that, but you also need to understand one other part of concept, and that's you have to execute, which means just do it. You're going to fail, okay? You're going to fail, and there are plenty of people in this world who have failed dramatically in people who didn't believe in them, okay? This was my grade point average, all right, my first semester in college. 
if you can believe that. Yes, that is real. <laughs> but understand that failure is an event. It's not a person, okay? And 25 years later, I've closed over 15,000 transactions, over $5 billion in, in sales. So understand that there's only one boss, and that's the customer, okay? Never forget about that. And stop focusing on dumb shit, folks. The shiny toy, get away from it, and just do your job. Really, just do your job, okay? And don't lose focus of the fundamentals. Think of the breakdown of that word, fun. Have fun in it. And the only thing stopping you is the mental side of it, not the physical. You can talk yourself out of anything, okay? Focus on it. Have fun, okay? Those are my two crazy kids. Love them to death. Also understand your passion. Why are you doing what you're doing? There's a rhyme and reason to it. Embrace that passion, empower your clients, make it easy for everybody. Because we at Results Consulting, we empower small businesses, okay? With technology, with speaking, with attending a, as um, a moderator or basically being a panelist. And we create that passion that people love. So look forward to working with you and understand that leaders don't force people to follow, they invite them on a journey. So invite your clients and your partners on a journey. They'll have more fun doing it. We were born to succeed, folks. Thanks for being there. I appreciate you taking the time with me today. This is how you get in touch with me. Olivia, are you there? Yes, thanks, Jeff. We appreciate My having pleasure. you today and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, that sounds everybody. Great again. Thanks for taking the time. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day, all. Bye bye.